Good that afternoon, good quality. evening, and good oh. night. <laughs> we just talked over each other. Sorry. <laughs> That's a great way to start. <laughs> Bad at that. This is our 10th video, and um, yeah, have we gotten any better at it? That's the question. I think we've just proven... Probs not. <laughs> <laughs> no. We're still as amateur as, as ever. What's on your mug tonight? Oh, what have I got? I've got Rocky. Oh, nice, nice. I'm just yeah. boring with my old flowers again. I need to get some good mugs. Yeah, good mugs are important. Mm-hmm. Let me just um, bring my screen up properly so I can see. Sorry, I've got a, I've got like three screens up in front of me, so I get distracted. Oh, fancy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back. Tell right. me, what's yeah. going on? Oh, what's going on? This, wow, the biggest news of the week, you know, Norm MacDonald. Oh, yeah. May I saw you better. guys. <clears throat> I saw some of that video and, yeah, that's pretty sad, hey? Oh, devastating. May as well get that news out of the way first so that we can end, end it on a high note. But, geez, like. And we won't talk about it too much because it's been covered to death on, on the show and on video, but far out, you and I were only referencing him on one of these videos like two weeks ago. I know. It wasn't that long ago. I remember. Yeah. yeah that was, um, that's a, it was a bit of a shock. I had no idea he was battling um, cancer at all. I don't know. Did anyone know that no, that his, was happening? His, fam- his family didn't know. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Bloody hell. But, Poor you know, guy. Yeah. But like just really um i don't know what's the word for it? the integrity there because he kept on performing to the end like he was just all about making people laugh and and you know and to think that that whole you know the the people that came after him you know a few years ago he was going through this at that time you know just incredible That's, to think of and then to not bring it up and be like you know don't come at me i've got cancer blah 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 blah, blah. that does show yeah. integrity as well like i mean not that normal people would do that but I think that in today's society if you're being attacked in the media you use anything that you need to use to get people to listen to you and um, the fact that he didn't use that at all is um, just shows the type of character that he had and I think so what I what I found really interesting is that uh, back when that all happened the the cancel stuff uh, YouTube removed his channel uh, from their platform it's back up as of the other yeah, day. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. They've reinstated it. They've, I think, as of this point in time, they've uploaded the first three episodes of the Norm MacDonald live show, which is the one they tried to pull down. So they've put that back up and I think they're going to do them all, which is great. So that means people can now go back and watch him and see the genius that he is. Yeah, I agree. That's um, yeah. that's some good news to come out of out of some sad news. This yeah, is a silver sure. lining. Yeah. Yeah. A little um, too late, but, you know. Yeah, but what a legend, what a legacy. Um, I know that Ben and I have been just binging as much content of his as we can, just all the YouTube videos, and it's great. Yeah, yeah. Nice memories. Um, something else that caught my attention, which is interesting, is that I think last week we mentioned the lead actor from that new Marvel Shang-Chi movie. Uh, yep. And do you remember I said to you that he had sort of gone down the social justice route and you know, tried to expose some people, blah, blah, blah. Well, I guess that's caught up with him. <laughs> I don't know if he'll be in the next movie. Because, wow. Do you tell? Well, they've gone back. Some people, I don't know, internet trolls, internet sleuths, whatever you want to call them, have dug up some social media posts he put up several oh, years ago. Oh, no. Where he, he says that pedophilia is no different to being gay. And that, that um, what was it? It was comments about China itself and how, because his family came from communist China and he talked about how living in China was like living in hell, all that kind of stuff. And thank God for the West, you know, to save his family and all that kind of stuff. That's not the narrative he was, he was running with a few weeks ago. <laughs> well, we won't politicise it, but like I just find that hilarious where it all starts to... um. It's the the glass house stones in glass houses. Yeah, that's the thing, guys. You've uh, you've really got to be careful about what you say when you have social media because <laughs> if you fucking start like obviously people change as as yeah. people, but that's kind of extreme. Like that's extreme 
stuff. And I feel like if you have those extreme views, you don't really change those views too easily. Um, <sighs> but I mean, the other thing too, is like, and I like, I don't believe in cancel culture at all. So I don't have a problem with him saying stuff that people find abhorrent. I find abhorrent, you know, that's just something he said, something he believes may have changed over the years. Who knows? You just don't cancel people. But I just find it interesting that he was on the bandwagon, you know, let's, Let's bring some people down. <laughs> and that's the way it always happens. It always somewhat, yeah, happens. Somewhat satisfying to me, but who knows how this will play out. But I, I don't think it'll go too well for him. The thing with these Hollywood types is that I feel like any sort of publicity is good pub- publicity for them. So I feel like the more attention he brings to himself with this kind of stuff, um, he might even, you know, he will probably stay in the franchise because. They, he brings it attention. So yeah, I know, but Disney and Marvel got rid of James Gunn for lesser reasons. Mm, oh, that's true. Mind you, they brought him back that's when true. DC when DC nabbed him. So mm. who knows? <laughs> who knows how this shit works, man? It's all like so political. Um, yeah. Look, it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> It really doesn't surprise me. I just thought that was worth bringing up because it hit the news and uh, this week, and we were talking about it. You know, it's we, it's we... us. What is it about us that we bring up this kind of shit? Maybe we have some bad juju going on, and we no, need to we need to sage it's, ourselves. It's, it's yeah, well, it is us, but I think it's it's me more than anything. There's a curse. <laughs> there's a curse going on because I don't know if you you you've probably heard on our podcast. Quick, tell me, in, I'm going to win a million dollars. <laughs> particularly in the like the first year that we did the podcast every week we would um talk about a celebrity and then the next week they would die oh my god so that's why our um our sort of tribute section at the start of the show back in the old days became the celebrity death watch you know, <laughs> oh my we god were, like, <laughs> like we talked about fred willard the next week he died like it was just that kind of thing you have like some freaky premonition about you know, you should reach out to these actors and be like, I've been thinking about you a lot lately. You should really watch out just in case. Well, we, we stopped that segment because of Betty White. We don't want her to die. Oh, God, please. No, don't. No, don't. <laughs> because Ben wanted, well, Ben did call it the, the Betty White death watch, I think it was. No, <laughs> no. Nobody I think wants I'll Betty White to go. actually cry that day. She's the oldest... Well, she's, she holds the world record for the longest career actress in the world. Oh, I, I would have thought that Maggie Smith was quite up there too. <laughs> well, Maggie Smith's not that old yet. And I think she didn't start her career until her 20s. Whereas I think, I think, I could be mistaken, Betty White started much younger when she was a child. God, she, she must have some stories. I would be so interested to be a fly tell on the wall. Or... Tell me that Betty White has not been on a few casting couches. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> That's a thought. Did you see her when she was younger? She was like, uh-huh. dang, girl. And yeah, I have no doubt. Yep. No doubt. That's just the way it, it rolled back then. And she's a pretty strong, strong-willed woman. She would have um, done what she needed to do to have a career. So Damn straight. I'm not putting words in her mouth, but I wouldn't be surprised. No, she's the golden girl. She is the golden girl. The golden girl. <laughs> she was the oldest golden girl and like she's the, the only That's one left. That's crazy to me. That's absolutely crazy to me. It didn't seem like it. I don't, What was her name? B. Arthur? B. Arthur. But Estelle Getty, who played the oldest one of the lot, was the youngest. She was. The, oh, my God. That's weird. I think she was. It was either her or Rue McCallan. Um think it was Estelle Giddy, but either way, she was like young compared to the other two. In terms of your personality, which golden girl do you identify the most with? <laughs> oh, geez. Well, I would love to say Blanche, but <laughs> I'm definitely a Dorothy. Is that is that Betty White? No, that's B. Arthur. Oh, that's B. Arthur. Oh, 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 type A. Yeah. Yeah, yep. I'm, I'm going to have I'm to a, say a mix a between, cross. yeah, I'm a mix between her and Betty White. Because yeah, um, I would I would say I'm a mix between B. Arthur and Rue McKellen, who played um, Blanche the sassy, mm-hmm, floozy, yep. the floozy, <laughs> the floozy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I, 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 yeah, 
wicked tongue and um, acid tongue at the same time. That's not a bad combination. It's not a bad. Yeah. It kind of evens itself out. It's I'm like a I'm like a type A where I'm a bit of a control freak, and then I'm kind of like Betty White. And the type that, you know, I say a lot of dumb shit, like a lot of dumb shit. And I'm very clueless half the time. So, yeah, I'm a mix between those two. Did you grow up on a farm with like donkeys? (laughs) No, but that would have been amazing. (laughs) (laughs) Northwestern Melbourne suburbs. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Hey, you know, I've realized that most of the conversations we have on these videos are sequel, prequel, remake related because that's kind of what populates the news cycles. So, Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that makes sense. I think it grabs my attention the most because it upsets me or (laughs) gets me excited the most. I know. I just hope it doesn't bore people that we we have the conversation every week, but I'm sure it doesn't. But um, Speaking of remakes, (laughs) did you see that someone's trying to remake The Lost Boys? I did. I did. Thoughts, feelings, musings? Oh, look, it doesn't need to be done. Well, I mean, let it be said, I of all the, the things, like sequels, prequels, remakes, remakes are my least favourite. Yeah. Like, I, I do not like a remake. Um, mind you, they don't necessarily take away from the original unless a new generation comes along and then ignores the original completely, which happened back in the day when Texas Chainsaw Massacre got a remake. And oh. Back then I owned a video store. And oh. so I'd, ha- I'd have kids coming in saying, have you got the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? And me knowing exactly what they wanted would give them the old one instead. Yep. And say, yes, here it is. It's fantastic. One of the greatest films ever made. And they fucking hated it. And it's <laughs> like, no, you're being educated right now. Like, this is one of the most important films ever made. And you're learning. <laughs> millennials then, just wouldn't, wouldn't comply. Cut to like 10 years later and I'm in another job and a girl comes up to me and starts talking about horror movies. She says, I'm the biggest horror f- you know, horror fan in the world. I love it when people say that. Like, that's hilarious. <laughs> I said, oh, okay, what's your favourite movie? And she's like, oh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I start talking about the actors in it. And she goes, no, no. And it's like Jeremy's sister. And I'm like, oh, he's in the remake. She's like, no, he's in the original. I'm like, no. Oh. Oh. Yeah. That must have got your eye twitching pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> But, like, you know, when people say things with such certainty, you know, and then someone has actually come at you and said, well, actually, no, that's the remake. But then you, you fucking dig in and you go, no, it's not. Oh, yeah, no, you can't dig in. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Like, you need to actually <laughs> come out and say it. It's like on our show, if, like, Ben lays something at me and I'm like, I didn't know that, I'm like, oh, all right, um, please tell me more and I will look that up for next week, you know. Mm, yep. I, I might actually dig in a little bit and... Uh... <laughs> And bite back a little bit, but I I have feeling and gusto um, in mine. But you know, if I'm wrong, I'll admit I'm wrong. I just won't be happy about it. <laughs> but one thing I'm not going to admit that I'm wrong about, and um, I'm I'm going to bring this up because um, last week you told me to go back and listen to an episode um, that you and Ben <laughs> did, where you included a segment from my podcast. Yeah. And then you decided to tear me a new one about it because I co- I said that Princess Bride isn't a comedy. Right. Now, mm. now, yep. <laughs> I agree. Princess Bride is comedic. Yes. However, it is not a comedy. It is not. It is not a comedy. Well, I'm just I'm not going to engage the argument because we'll let people judge for themselves. I can tell you this: if you type into Google. Um, greatest comedies of the 80s it's within the top five or top 10 every time if you google um rom-coms of the 80s it's in the top five i think and if you type in comedy satire it's in the top three because i've i've got those would you not would you not class it as like action adventure action adventure romance it has those qualities to it, but it's definitely a comedy. And Rob Reiner, the director, would be the first to admit that. I'm sure if you go back and watch interviews with him, he would be the first to admit that. Like Ben said on the video, there's pratfalls and there's, you know, slapstick, you know. Um, anybody want a peanut? You know, the pratfalls down the hill. Like, it's just, it's kind of Billy Crystal, Peter Cook, like Carol Kane. These are comedy alumni, you know. You could have comedy alumni in a non-comedy genre of movie. Course you could. Of course you could. 
Anyway, we'll leave it, but I needed to bring it up because well, you I guys be honest decided with you. to tear me a new one. We definitely did tear you a new one. Um, and out of respect for you, I haven't put a poll out, which I was going to do. You can put a poll out. My mother would agree with you. She's she, uh, If my mum listens to this or watches this, she's going to agree with you. I agree with you half-heartedly, but I don't fully agree. No, that's fair. That's fine. That's just you know, your opinion and you can have that. Mm-hmm. It does, doesn't change. Do you, do you laugh a lot when you watch the movie? I laugh. I laugh. Like, I don't know. Like, to me, it, it, it's, I think about it, I don't class it as a comedy. I class okay. it as a classic action romance I don't know I don't know but I've never thought I've never thought of the princess bride and gone comedy you know what I mean like in fact if if I'm not mistaken I could be mistaken reckon back when it came out the 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 trailers that were running on television the tv spots for it were saying things like you know are you ready for the greatest comedy of the year or the funniest movie this season you know that's how they promoted it okay the princess bride a new comedy by Rob Reiner you brought it up? Oh, no, I'm. I, that's completely fine. <laughs> I love it when people change my mind. I'm on the verge it's, of changing my mind, but I'm not all the way there. We both agree it's a great movie. One of the funniest and most charming comedies I've seen in a long time, says Roger Ebert. It's my top three. Top three. So you got Goonies, you got, hang on, what's the other one? Goonies and I've forgotten. Um, do, do, do. Stand do. by me. Do, do, do. Yes. Do. Same director as uh, I know. Princess Bride. I know. I know. I know. Um, have you had spam yet? No. I've done my weekly shop and um, oh, just haven't got spam. <laughs> just keep Rats. just keep forgetting the spam, you know? <laughs> Always okay. remember the chalky milk, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I nearly bought some tonight. Fire out. Uh, forget that BM. Do you know the story about, um, oh, you said BM too. So, you know the old story about how BM was made? No, please do tell. Um, I'm going to preface this with allegedly because I don't want oh, pure no. on my ass. Oh, no. Uh, but may, may or may not know somebody that worked in one of the factories. Ah, uh, inside scoop. Flavored, flavored milk was made from the, the excess that came out of the pipes when they cleaned the pipes out. So they'd flush the pipes and get all the scum off the side of them. They'd flush it with like boiling water or something like that. And then that, whatever, that bucket of lardy kind of stuff is what they would then um, dilute and put flavouring into. Cool. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like, it's the, it's the flavoured milk equivalent of nuggets. and. If, yeah. if I can appreciate anything, it's resourcefulness. And if they can yeah. find... <laughs> If they can find a way to sell that and be profitable, good fucking on them. I agree. It doesn't stop me. It doesn't stop and it me. It tastes fucking it. delicious. So. It does. There's something about pre-made flavored milk, particularly <sighs> chocolate. Love it. Love it. You just go in, you get that bloody, I, I usually get like the two liter and then you like lift up the bottom and you see that big, huge layer of chocolate across. Oh, oh <laughs> man. Oh, you know, you, you know. Shake it. I made the mistake, as you know, a few weeks ago of buying the apple pie flavored flavored milk. Yeah, simply because, that's because weird. it had it had your name on the carton. It said Chloe's <laughs> milk. And I'm like, oh, better try this one. Sent you a fucking Snapchat and like, Semper pie. Wow. It was gross. <laughs> Thanks for that. It tastes like shit. <laughs> it did. Rotten apples. Oh, My middle gross. name. Uh, um, yeah. Anyway, digression. Uh, the other remake that they announced was Flight of the Navigator is being remade and it's been directed by Bryce Dallas Howard. I did see something like that and I actually don't think I've seen the original. Ooh, get on it. It's right right up your alley. Oh, okay. Yeah, for sure. It's one of those those kids' fantasy adventures of the 80s that one of the seminars. Sold. Ones, like, Already yeah. sold. Already sold. Yeah, for sure. Kids' 80s adventure. I'm sold. Love it. We've um, we've spoken about that on the show. It's just, it's a staple favourite of ours and um Je- sarah jessica parker was in it back when she was like 16 um, yeah wow okay yeah it's a very very cool movie and paul rubens aka Wee herman plays the voice of the uh spaceship yeah what's the deal with that guy he's pretty popular over in the states he seems he's a little like, bit odd to me he's, 
he's one of my heroes. He's yeah, he is odd. Um, he got he see he got swept up in the '90s equivalent of cancel culture, um, right? For a number of reasons, um, he never got. Um, what's the word, charged or anything like that. He was acquitted of all charges, but some of that stuck. So he was a performer who who uh, <laughs> he did the Pee Wee Herman character. Yeah, so it's, and, it's a kid's entertainer pretty much. Well, yeah? yes and no. Pee Wee Herman began as a comedy show for adults, right? Which right. I have the DVDs of these performances. They're great. It's the perception or the presentation of a kid's sort of play school kind of Mr. Rogers show, but he tells filthy jokes. Right. Well, not filthy, but cheeky. So he does a lot of upskirting and things like that. You know, like right. his his persona is like a six year old. So ha ha ha, and he like lifts yeah. up dresses and stuff like that. I think and, that's why I've I've been really confused by his character because I and he's don't a, quite. He's a comedy genius. When you watch those um those adult orientated ones, um they are great. And Phil Hartman and you know John Paragon mm-hmm. and a few other SNL alumni. Yep. Were part of it. Anyway. Then the network saw the potential for a kid's show, an actual kid's show. So that's what really made him famous was the Pee Wee Herman show. Right. And, and it's, it's a, it, was way be- it was way before its time. Like it was just a really smart, savvy kid's show. Two movies came of that. One was directed by Tim Burton, mm-hmm. um, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. And then blah, blah, blah. He became an actor as well. He did other things like the original Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie and a few other things. Mm-hmm. But then the controversy was... One, he got caught masturbating in a porno theatre in New York, <laughs> right? So that was not good for Pee Wee Herman, you know, child entertainer. Uh-huh. So that was that. I don't think there were charges pressed in the end. It was just headline tabloid news. Right. But then what really almost got him into trouble was child pornography charges. Oh, but, man. But he he managed to not not worm his way out. He actually... Logist, like um, legitimately talked his way out of it because he was a collector of those vintage photo- photographs, you know, the ones from the sepia-toned ones where mm. um, like the little rascals back in the day would put kids in compromising positions, not for sexual gratification, but just let's make kids do things that are grown up and it's funny kind of, or, you know, right, kitschy. And so he had images of like kids, you know, 10, 11, 12, boys and girls, in like lingerie, pretended to be hookers and things like that. Yeah. And it wasn't like pornography. It was just suggestive. And right. so the fact he didn't have any modern or contemporary images, they were all vintage ones that he could prove that he collected over time from certain places, had receipts for them, and that he proved he was a collector of vintage things, not just photography but other things as well. So that ended up blowing over. They, there was no grounds to charge him on. And that took him about 15 years to have a resurgence. And he did that by bringing the Pee Wee Herman adult show back to Broadway. Right. And then that Netflix got involved and launched a new movie with him, which is fantastic. And yeah. Long story, but Pee Wee Herman, I mean, Paul Rubens, he's a legend. He's fantastic. It's, a, it's an interesting story because I don't know any of that. I know the character, obviously, but I've never seen the movies. I've never seen anything like that. And then hearing those stories, it makes me question it a little bit, um, obviously, yeah, it as does, a mother. But, but uh, you can, and, um, yeah, I agree. But you, but now you, you have a basis to look into it if you are interested in the story. You know, he's, he's, never, been, he's never been charged on anything related to child pornography. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you can you can look it up. I mean, in today's world, um, he wouldn't have a career even now yeah. because people like to backtrack to people's past crimes and blah blah blah. They can't peg him on this. Like you go back in the legitimacy of what he was doing, is yeah. apparent. Yeah. Fair enough. But I, Fair enough. But I'm yeah. a, I'm alone. I, I am like I'm, I'm a big defender of his because I, I think he's a comical genius, and you know if that's his thing, that's his thing. You know. Yeah. As as a hobbyist, as lo- I mean, if he's collecting other things, not a lot as well as, you know, photography, then. Um, but the, no, but I, the I, photography. I can see the photography. Let, the context of it though is like maybe he had two thousand photos and three hundred of those were kids. The rest were adults. Hmm. Like they were part of an overall collection. Hmm. Mhm. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm not going to keep going on that one. Because I'm going to say things. I, 
I'll be interested into into looking him up, but I don't know if I'll. It might take me a while to be able to watch anything of his, knowing that oh, backstory. No, that's up to you. But um, yeah. the Pee Wee's Big Adventure, the Tim Burton film, is so good. It's just hilarious. One of the greats. A lot of um, a lot of people I've heard interviews for, um, really love him and and speak about him a lot in interviews as their inspiration growing up as well. So, you yeah. know, um. It'd be interesting to go back and have a look at that. Definitely, we never really, we never really had much Pee Wee Herman in Australia. Like no, in the, I think that's why I have no time. idea who he is. Yeah, um, and I didn't really get into his work until I was maybe seventeen, eighteen. Yeah, and was like really into the SNL Kids in the Hall type of stuff. Yep, fair um, enough. But anyway, but anyway there you go. Um, what was another one that? Um, well, um, Triplets is finally going ahead. Yeah, what do you reckon that's going to be like? I think it'll be okay. Um, I mean, it's, they've been trying to make it for a long time and Eddie Murphy has been the problem because he was attached to it. Yeah. And he was just refusing to play ball. Always something was in the way, scheduling or blah, blah, blah. So they've just decided to replace him with Tracy Morgan, which I'm not a huge Tracy Morgan fan, but, you know, you know, I'm, I don't have a problem with him in it. I think he would play the part well. I love Tracy Morgan. Yeah. love Tracy Morgan when I heard about his car accident I was like I was like <laughs> god please no don't take this one please no <laughs> I just yeah. love him I think he's fantastic um yeah I'd be interested to see it Danny DeVito has kind of made a comeback for me with um it's always sunny I do really enjoy him on that tv show mm-hmm. and um I'm never sorry to see Schwarzenegger so you know good on him if it's going to be the- good I pre- I'm going to appreciate it the concept is hilarious I haven't heard what the concept is. Well, just the concept of they've got a third oh, brother. Oh, there's a who's third black. brother. Yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> like you got this massive like Austrian guy and this tiny little midget and then this African American guy. <laughs> I mean, like back when was that filmed? Early nineties? Like they they like Danny DeVito looked old then and that was know. thirty years ago. Do you know he's so. like he's he's only like four foot something. Yeah. In yeah. Reality. Yeah. And I had no idea who he was married to. Or was I think they're separated? Oh, are they? Oh, right. Yeah. I um. Yeah, I had no idea. I thought that was very interesting because she's quite small too. So that makes that, that makes um that makes Matilda like a reality show. Oh my god! <laughs> that was just like a day in the life. <laughs> my, oh my god! My mind is being blown. How did I never put that together? Yeah, well, he directed that too. Like he's um he's a great director. <laughs> uh, how good um I, I, I reckon I was gonna say I reckon um Matilda will feature in an upcoming episode of the podcast. So really, I love look that out for movie. that one. Yeah, it's cool. I'm gonna watch that one with the kids this weekend. Actually, I think um if we've got time, I did want to talk mm-hmm. about um an extremely good slash terrible movie I watched on the weekend. Um, Pearl Harbor. Um, so I'd never seen it before. Um, mm-hmm. And that that's kind of embarrassing to say. And I was scrolling through and, and I saw two suggestions, right? I saw Die Hard and I saw Pearl Harbor. And I said, <laughs> Die Hard. And then I'm like, oh, you know what? I've never seen Pearl Harbor before. Maybe I should. Maybe I should. I looked at it three hours. I'm like, oh, fuck. It's <laughs> that's, that's, that's a big commitment. And I'm like, nah, nah, let's do it. My God, what a piece of shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, firstly, um, I would commend you for a wise choice because you've probably seen Die Hard many times, I'm sure. Not enough. Exactly. So you've, you've picked one you haven't seen. So Broadening yep. Horizons, that's what I would do. Yep. Um, and as for Pearl Harbor, it's an interesting one because it's one of the most lambasted films of all time. Like it's, it's been pissed on many times by many okay. people. Rightfully and so. Its reputation is precisely what what you're suggesting. Uh-huh. Um, having said that, it's it's a it's a melodrama, and I like it. I don't love it, but I I appreciate it. I don't know. It's sort of it's Titanic with wings. It's you know it's it's. Let me clarify this. Yeah. The best part of the movie was when the Japs started bombing Pearl Harbor, <laughs> and I mean that in the in know, the movie terms, right? Because the romance part of this movie is so astronomically, phenomenally fucking dumb that I was just sitting there going, 
what the what yeah what what no what it's, the, Michael it's in, Bay it's, come on yeah it's a miscalculation but I think it was very intentional it was going for a type of melodrama a forced romance that existed in cinema back in those days like back in the 40s 50s that's the kind of way romance was presented in film and movies were long back in those days. Same with, um, I've spoken to you before about Australia with Nicole Kidman and yeah. um, Hugh Jackman. That's a throwback film to the Chevelle Chips Rafferty movies of the 40s in Australia. And I think a lot of people when they saw Australia didn't know those references and therefore just thought it was kind of dumb. Whereas I watched it with a big romanticism. It's like, wow, this is a throwback. This is really melodramatic. And I think Pearl Harbor was attempting a similar thing and just most people either didn't get the references or in their perception poorly executed which i'm happy to go with if if that's the general consensus i like it though i I can watch it easily it's a no-brainer like you don't have to put much thought into it i reckon i just skip the first hour and a bit of the movie and i can watch it from there it's just that first hour is just uh, useless to me i would recommend like utterly useless I would recommend Midway, the new movie Midway. I think you would get a kick out of that because it's it's Pearl Harbor without the laborious forced romance stuff, but it's yeah. very similar in its tone otherwise. Okay. Well, I'll take that on board because I really enjoyed <laughs> it from that part onwards. I love a Michael Bay movie. He mm-hmm. knows how to pull action together. He knows those how to get that visual effect. And, yep. you know, I was having all the feels because there's a reason I can't watch Titanic is because I get way too emotional Um and my like hugest fear is drowning. So like it, it brings a lot of emotions um, up to the surface, if you will, um, for me. So watching those parts, loved it, loved yeah. it. And you know me, I love any type of war movie as well. So that really sort of speaks to my personality, but yeah, I can no, know, the, like. The, the attack scene and the bombing was, was pretty spectacular. I remember watching that at the cinema and just going, wow, this is fucking huge. Even Ben Affleck and Josh Hartnett, I feel like, did a fucking amazing job having really good chemistry as best friends, brother mm. type situation. I feel like they had great chemistry um, until the end. And then I'm not going to give anything away if people haven't seen it. It's like 20 can, something years old. You can, like, give it get away. Over it. you can give it away. So when Josh Hartnett is dying, obviously, mm. and he's like, it's literally, he's dying and he's coughing and spluttering. I'm so cold. And then like literally does that. Like, you know what? Like, what the fuck was that? I would argue not. That is not bad acting. That's bad directing. No, it's bad acting too. I don't think so. Because that's where. I'm so cold. It's like Joey Tribbiani from Friends. No, no, but, but that's, but that's what acting is. You do what the director tells you. And if that's what Michael Bay wanted from that scene, that's what you give him. And Michael Bay as a director was probably there saying, no, I want you to elevate that I want I want this and he'll imitate it and that's what the actor has to do and that's I mean that's the job of a director is just to tell an actor how to act mm. you know that's how I see it I'm Josh glad he Hartnett's got better a good at actor. it he's a good actor I like him I thought he was until I saw this movie and then I got a little bit frustrated um a little bit frustrated at the ending there but you could be right you could be very right he was great in Wrath of Man the new Guy Ritchie film Ooh, I like Guy Ritchie. Yeah, okay. We um we're a little bit over time, so we'll wrap it yep. up. Okay, sorry. Yes, no, I just <laughs> I had to get that out of my system there. Well, Pearl Harbor is too long, and therefore this video is too long. There you go. We've just made it cohesive. Yeah, you've you've attached a theme to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll um see you next Wednesday night. Yes, you will. Awesome. See ya. Bye.